What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to open any Excel file in Kinter. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to open any Excel file into a tree view in Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab a totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is over 150 pages, chock full of every single Kinter and TTK widget attribute. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget book and grab that today. And while you're there, check out Kinter membership, get all my course videos and books for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership right now. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to create a little app that will open any Excel file in Kinter and output it into a Kinter tree view widget. So you can see we can open this, we can pick something out, boom, it opens. We want to open a different one, boom, it opens, it scrolls. And we could change the color and mess around with all this stuff. And we'll sort of look at that a little bit in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the get bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below. So as well as link to the playlist with all the other videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file. It's our regular Kinter starter code. I'm calling it ex.py short for Excel, I guess. And we're going to be using custom Kinter in this video to make it look sort of uh, dark and cool. So I've imported custom Kinter and used the basic starter code that we always have for that. If you don't have that, just head over to your terminal, pip install custom Kinter, and that should be fine. So we're going to be using several things in order to do this. We're going to be using NumPy and Pandas, which are both data analysis type things. And those two things are going to do most of the heavy lifting. So uh, let's go ahead and just start importing stuff. So we want to import NumPy. We also want to import pandas as PD. Now, if you don't have those, head over to your terminal. I've created a virtual environment here uh, just to keep track of all this stuff. We just want to pip install numpy. I've already got it. So it says, hey, you've already got it. We also want to pip install pandas and pip install custom tkinter if you haven't already. I've already got that. So, okay, we're good to go there. We're also going to need a few Kinter things as well. We might as well import those. So let's go from tkinter. We want to import TTK because the tree view is a TTK widget. We also want file dialog. That's a little box that'll pop up that allow us to select our file to open. And we also want a message box that will grab any errors that we might have and pop them up on the screen. So, okay, looks good so far. So let's come down here and let's just rough out our GUI here. So first we want a tree view. And I'm just going to call this my underscore tree. Set that equal to a TTK dot tree view. And we want to put this thing in root. Let's go my underscore tree dot pack. Give this guy a pad Y of like 20, push it down screen a little bit. We're also going to want a button. So let's go my underscore button. And this is going to be a custom Kinter dot CTK button. And we want to put it in root. We want the text to say something like um, open Excel file, something like that whatever. And we want to give this a command of let's call this open underscore Excel. Now we don't have this function yet, but I'll create it in just a second. And let's my underscore button dot pack this guy and also give it a pad Y of 20 push down screen a little bit. Okay, so let's come up here. And let's define our open Excel function and just pass for now. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure this looks okay. Python ex dot pi. And so far, we've got this tree view with nothing in it and a button. Okay, so far, so good. Actually, I'm going to make this a little small. Let's go 850 by 400, whatever. Okay, so now let's head over here. And let's open a file. And we're gonna use the file dialog box for that. So I'm going to create a variable called my file. This is the file name that we're going to look up. And this is going to be file dialog dot ask open file name. And this will ask what file you want to open, right? So inside of here, let's give this a title and let's call this open file. It's just going to be at the little top of the box there. And now what types of files do we want to open? Well, let's go file type equals, and this is going to be a tuple. And we want to open a couple of different types of files. First, we want to open Excel files. So let's type in Excel files. And Excel files come in the format of .xlsx. That's the file extension, right? So we're going to say, hey, open any file that has a file extension of xlsx. That's an Excel file. We also want to do just to catch all, all files. I mean, you don't really need to, but we might as well just to see some error stuff. And I'll show you that in just a second. So we want to just go 
anything and anything, right? This will open basically any file. These are wildcard characters that allow us to open any file. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and see what that looks like. Head back over here, run this guy. Now, when we click this button, boom, this thing pops up. And you can see here, it says Excel files and all files. Those are the two things we just designated. If we ch change it to all files, we get all files, right? Over here at the top, it says open file. That's the little title we just gave it right there. So, all right, so far so good. Now let's actually grab the file. And we want to do a try accept block because if we don't get an Excel file, we need to throw up an error because we only want Excel files, right? So let's go try. And we're gonna create something called a data frame. This is a data science thing. We're just gonna call it DF. And that's gonna be a PD dot read underscore Excel. And what do we want to read my underscore file, which we just grabbed right here. So this PD, this is pandas up here, we're importing pandas as PD. So we can do anything in pandas by calling PD dot something, right. And what are we doing? We're calling the read Excel file, which does exactly what it sounds like it reads an Excel file, right. And what it does is it slaps it into this variable. And if we want, we can actually print out onto our terminal just to see what that is. But it's not that interesting. So okay, if we get an error, we need to handle that. So let's go accept. And let's call exception as E. And then let's grab a little message box. Let's go message box dot show error. And let's go Whoa! <laughs> then uh, let's create an F string here. And let's go there was a problem. And then we can actually just print out what that problem is by referencing this E, which is this guy right here, right? And this message box, of course, is because we imported that there with our file dialog. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it see if that worked. Try a couple of things here. First, let's open an actual Excel file. We do that. And when we close it, we see here's the data frame. It's basically the Excel file. So that's really cool. So we know this is working so far, it's grabbing the data and it's doing something with it. Uh, let's run this guy again, and try and open something else. So let's switch it to all files. And let's just open a Python file. Uh Oh, there's a problem Excel file format cannot be determined, you must specify an engine manually. So it's cool, we get a little pop up and it actually says what's going on. Now, if you're just creating something that only opens Excel files, there's no reason to sort of allow it to open all files. But I kind of want to show you how to do it because it's interesting and we can easily deal with the errors that come up with that right here. So okay, that looks good so far. So now we've got our stuff, we just need to put it up onto the screen, add it to the tree view. So come down here. And still in this function, let's first clear the tree view. So there's nothing in it to begin with. But if we open an Excel file, and then open another one, we need to clear whatever's in there. So the second one can go in. So let's go my underscore tree dot delete, and we need to delete any children that are in the tree view. So to do that, we just call the wildcard character, and we go my underscore tree dot get underscore children. And that's a function, and that will delete anything that was in there before. So okay, so now we need to get the headers. So in any Excel file, there's going to be headers at the top normally, right? So to do that, we call my underscore tree, and we want to designate the column. And what's that going to be? Well, it's going to be a list of df dot columns. Now what is df? Remember, that's that data frame, and we don't need to print it anymore. So I'll get rid of that. And maybe I'll comment here, create a data frame. Okay, so that df has a function called columns, and it will just grab the columns for us. That's one of the nice things about pandas and data frames. So we want to turn that into a Python list so that we can then output it onto the screen. So there we go, that should do that. Now next we go my underscore tree. And what do we want to do? We want to show these guys. So what are we showing? These are headings. That's just what the tree view calls the column things. So okay, we've got them. Now we need to actually show the headers or headings or whatever you want to call them, right. So to do that, we need to loop through this list and output them onto the screen. So let's create a loop, let's go for call short for columns, in my underscore tree column. What do we want to do? Well, we want to go my underscore tree dot headings, and we want to slap in the call, we want to set that text equal to whatever the call is. Okay, 
So, all right, that probably is okay. Let's go ahead and run this and see if that worked. Let's open an Excel file, open our dog data. And okay, we've got headings. There's nothing actually in them yet. Uh, did I misspell something? Yes, it should be heading, not headings. There we go. Delete that. So my tree dot heading. Okay, let's run this again. See if that worked this time. And I, this is just a random Excel spreadsheet I had for some other project that had dog licensing information for some state. So I'm just using it. And you can see we have breed color, dog name and owner zip. All right, so that seems to work. Now we just need the actual data. So let's show our data. So same thing, we're just gonna kind of create a, a loop and sort of slap it all up onto the screen. So let's go DF underscore rows. DF is just short for data frame. I'm sticking with the DF theme here. And so this is gonna be equal to DF. Now we're actually gonna take the stuff in our data frame from pandas, convert it to NumPy, which will then allow us to format it a lot easier. So let's go DF dot two underscore NumPy. And then we want to convert that then to a list like that. So Python is object oriented. We can string things along like this, dot, 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 super easy. And there we go. So now let's loop through that. So let's go for row in DF underscore rows. What do we want to do? Well, we want to my tree dot insert this thing. We want to start at the top and we want to go to the end. And what do we want to do? We want to set the values equal to whatever that row is, each row that we're looping through. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it and see how that looks. I think that should do the trick. So now let's open our dog data. Boom, there it is. You can see there's no scroll bar, but if I scroll on my mouse wheel, it definitely scrolls and you can add a scroll bar. I've got videos on that. I'll try and find a link and post that somewhere, but uh, yeah, super easy and we're pretty much done now. The only thing left to do is change the color and stuff to whatever you want. And uh, it's pretty easy. We can knock that out fairly quickly. So let's come down here to where we defined our tree view and let's set tree style. So I'm gonna create a variable. I'm just gonna call it style. And this is gonna be a TTK dot style widget. And we wanna go style dot theme underscore use. And I'm just gonna set this to the default theme. And we wanna change style colors. So let's go style dot configure. And we're working with tree view here. And we're gonna change a bunch of these attributes. So I'm just gonna put them on each separate lines. First, we wanna change the background color. And I wanna change the background color to 707070, it's sort of a dark gray. We wanna change the foreground color, which is the text. I'm gonna make that black. I think I wanna change the row height to 25. So the rows aren't also scrunched together, right? And finally, let's change the field background to 707070. The field background is if there's only a few rows, those will be whatever color you set the background, but then the rest of the tree view underneath that will be white. Well, we don't want white, we wanna change that to the same color that the rows are. So we set the field background to, to that. So, all right, that looks pretty good. We also want to change color of selected rows. And even if you don't wanna change the color, you still need to do this. So when we click on a row, what highlighted color will it be? Well, let's go style dot map and we want to set the tree view what do we want to set the background to and this is a list with a tuple inside of it we want the selected to be what color do we want i want five three five three five three which is a little bit darker gray basically okay i think that should do the trick so unless we mess something up that should do it let's run this guy again and boom, right away, you see, okay, it looks different. We open this guy, dog data, boom. All right, looking pretty good. We click on this, changes color. We wanna open a different file, does it. All this stuff underneath is the same color, so that selected field thing worked. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, I don't really love this color, and also, boy, these columns, the headers are really scrunched together. How can we fix that? Well, we can do a little bit of a hack to do that. 
And this isn't built into the tree view widget, which is weird. You should be able to change the width or the height or whatever, but you can't. So there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. My favorite is to, let's see, right up here where we create this thing, let's uh, hack the column width or height or whatever. Yeah, height, I guess it would be, right? So let's go my underscore tree dot heading. And we wanna set the very first column, which is column number zero. If you know anything about tree views, it's usually off the side, you can't even see it. So what we wanna do is we wanna set the text of that column to slash in, which means a new line. So it's just gonna put a new line underneath the first column. And then by default, all the rest of the columns will have that same sort of height. So let's go back here and run this real quick and you can see right off the bat, boom, that's much taller, whatever, much more height. And I think that looks better. Okay, so that looks good. Now, how do we change the color of this top header thing? Super easy, let's come back down here to this guy and let's uh, change color of headers. And same thing, it's just style.configure. But in, up here we did tree view. Now we wanna do tree view dot heading, right? And same thing, we wanna set the background to whatever color we want. Let's make it that same 535353 that the selected row thing is. And we also wanna set the foreground color, the color of the text basically. I don't want the text to be black. And uh, yeah, that should do it. So let's come back over here. Try this guy one more time. All right, now we got a nice different color there. Boom, very cool. And that's all there is to it. So a very quick and easy way to import Excel spreadsheets into your Kinter app using the tree view. You can play around with the colors, lots of different things you can do with that. We could talk all day about styling this thing, so I'll just sort of leave it at there, but uh, yeah, pretty cool, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out tkinter.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF of my Kinter widget book. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.